2000 series Velocity Training Session. My name is Vianne and I'll be taking you through the executive handset today. I'd like to start the session with taking you through the key layout. Looking at the phone, the button down the bottom is a mute key, so when you're on a telephone call, by pressing that button, you will activate the mute feature. By pressing it again, that will deactivate it. Besides the mute button, you have your minus and your plus, and that's your volume control, so when you're on a telephone call, you can press the minus or you can press the plus, and that will adjust the volume of the caller. Besides that, we have the speaker button, the speaker button is for hands-free. These phones have a hot keypad, so if you leave the handset in the cradle and start dialing, it will automatically go onto speakerphone. You can then lift the handset to take it off speakerphone, or you could switch back to hands-free. Handset in the cradle, and we're on hands-free. When you're finished, you can press the hang-up button, and that will disconnect the call. Moving along, you've got a button that says F1 and F2. These are programmable features. On the main operator phone, the F1 button is a night service key, so that would be programmed to switch your phone on to nights. And the F2 button is an operator divert, which you may use when maybe everyone's out of the office and you wish to divert the call through to a mobile, or it can be diverted through to another colleague if the operator's not at the phone. Besides that, we've got two little triangles here. That's actually your redial button. Now if you press it quickly, it will dial the last number you've dialed, if you hold your finger down on that, you can scroll through and find the number that you want. That actually lists the last 10 numbers on the screen. Once you've got the number on the screen that you've wished to dial, you press the OK button. I'll just hang up on that feature. OK, moving along, you've got an I button here. When I take you through programming and personal speed dials, that's when we're going to use the I button. We've got a little envelope here which is flashing at the moment. Now that will be flashing because we need to initialise your mailbox. So once you've actually pressed that and you've recorded your name and your passcode, it will no longer flash. I'll take you through the voicemail setup further in the session. Moving up the phone, you have a navigator key. The navigator key controls your screen. Um, you can scroll and you can press the OK button, which you saw when we were using the redial function to activate a feature. The C button is like a clear key, so when we start programming in speed dials, you'll see that button come into use. On the side here, we have a 10 button one touch module, which has everyone's extensions programmed in there. Now, um, you could have extensions or you could have outside numbers programmed onto those keys. Looking at the screen, we have five buttons on each side of the screen. See how we've got some dots here? Those are actually one-touch speed dials that can be programmed. Um, further along in the session, I'll take you through how to program those. Also, on the screen, you can see we've got a centre line with a little bobble there. That means that you're at the top of the page. When you arrow down with your navigator key, what it's doing is it's basically flicking over the pages. So you can see you've got a whole lot of dots here where you can program um, speed dials on. So remember, they can be outside numbers or they can be extensions. If I keep on pressing it, it takes me back to the top of the page. We've got three tabs, we've got menu, perso and info. So with your navigator key, scrolling over, you can go to your info page. This just gives you information about um, the name of the phone, the extension number, whether you've got any voicemail messages, or whether you've got any text mail. Now that's just internal text mail. Arrow back, we're on our personal page. Your personal page is your home page, so that's where all your speed dials sit. Arranging over, then you've got your menu page. So your menu page is where we're going to go to program in um, speed dials or change the ringtones and things like that. OK, I'll just go back to your personal page. To make a telephone call using your executive handset, there are a few ways that you can do it. You can use the keypad down the bottom to dial by name, or you can dial one for an outside line, followed by the telephone number. If it's an extension, you can dial the extension number, or if the extension is programmed in, you can just press the pre-programmed extension button. So the extension could be on the add-on module here, or it could be a one-touch speed dial that you've programmed into your phone. Firstly, I'll demonstrate the um, dial-by-name keypad. So you just go straight to the keypad and start entering who you're after. So I'm just going to enter in Leanne. 
and it actually pops up on the screen. Now to dial that, I can press the OK button and it starts ringing that telephone number. I'm just going to hang up on that. Um, I could lift the handset to do that if I wanted to, so I could lift the handset and start dialing Leanne, and again, OK, and it will dial that telephone number. When an incoming call comes into your phone, you can either lift the handset or press the little handset button here to go on to speakerphone. I'm just going to lift the handset. I've now answered the call from Robert. Um, you can see a little man with a little handset, so that's um, indicating that I'm on a telephone call. I just wanted to show you now, when a second call comes into the phone, it's quite easy to actually switch between the two. So let's... Okay, so I can see John's calling me, and I've got a little symbol that comes up here. By pressing the left-hand top key, it puts Robert on hold, and I'm now speaking to John. I can toggle quite easily between the two, so let's just flick the little music symbol here. I'm now speaking to Robert, and John's on hold. If I wanted to say goodbye to one of the callers, I could press my hang-up key, go back to the last music symbol that's left, and I'm now speaking back to John. If I wanted to switch to speakerphone, I can press the speaker key, hang up, and I'm now on speakerphone. And remember, to end the call, it's just the little hang-up button here. When you're on a telephone call and you wish to put the caller on hold, if you look at the screen, you can actually see the button that corresponds to hold. So if I press the key, the call is now on hold. They get a little music symbol. To get the call back, you press back into the music symbol. I'm speaking back to the caller. To transfer the call through to another extension, there's three ways that you can do this. If you've got the person pre-programmed on the add-on module, you can just press the extension button. You can either wait and announce the call, or you can hang up and the call will be transferred through. The other way of doing it is if they're not programmed onto an add-on module, you can go straight to your keypad and enter in the person's name. So I'd just like to demonstrate that to you. First I'll show you with the add-on module, so I'm going to pop it through to Robert. Okay, so at this point Robert's phone's ringing. Now I could hang up and the call will be transferred through. If I needed to get the call back, however, I can press the hang up button, go back into the music symbol, and I'm now speaking back to the caller. So I'd just like to demonstrate that once more. So I press Robert's button. I can then hang up, the call's transferred through. But if you need to bring the call back for any reason, I need to hang up to clear it and then go back into the music symbol and I'm speaking back to the caller. Okay, so that's using the add-on module. Let's say now I want to transfer it through to Robert and I don't have him on an add-on module, I can use the keypad. So I just start spelling Robert's name. Comes up on the screen. I press OK. Again, it starts ringing Robert's phone. I can then hang up to complete the transfer or I can press the hang up key back into the music symbol and I've got the call back. The other way of transferring the call is I can actually use the new call function on the screen. So if I went new call, I could then dial in the extension number, again and wait to announce the call or I could just hang up and the call would be transferred through. I'm just going to bring that call back again, so I'm going to hang up, go back to the music symbol and I'm now speaking back to John. With the executive handset, you're able to set up a three-party conference call, so I'd just like to demonstrate that now to you. Um, the caller could have either called you, or we could dial out to make a live call. So I'm just going to dial out first. One for an outside line, followed by the telephone number. So once you're talking to your first party, I can then bring another person in. Now it could be an external number or it could be an internal. I'm just going to make it an internal call. So I'm going to go new call, followed by the extension number. If I was doing an outside number, I would have gone one for an outside line and then the phone number. Okay, so I'm speaking to the second party. To bring us all together now, the word conference comes up on the screen. So by pressing the button corresponding to conference, 
we now have a three-party conference call. For in your phone, you'll use the little icon up here in the corner of the phone. By pressing the button corresponding to that little upside down arrow, you have a few choices here. So you could immediate forward the call straight to your voicemail box, so it means that your phone won't ring. Or I could use immediate, which would then give me the option to enter in the destination that I wanted to forward the calls through to. So I'm just going to demonstrate forwarding it to my personal voicemail box, just by pressing the button corresponding. It's now accepted, and I can hang up on that. And what happens is it comes across the phone saying that it's forwarding to voicemail intermittently, it does that. And the little arrow here moves around the screen just to show you that you've got your divert on. When you want to cancel that, you press the button again, and cancel forward will take that off. Rather than forwarding your calls to voicemail, you may choose to forward your calls maybe to another colleague. So to do that, you press the button corresponding to the upside down arrow, press immediate, and then you enter in the destination you want to forward to. Hang up, and that takes you out of forwarding. And again, you can see the little arrow moving around the screen. Okay, to cancel it, press the button, cancel forward. To program a personal speed dial, you need to assign a button to the dots on the screen. So where the dots are, these are vacant spaces that you can program in, either outside numbers or extensions. So by pressing the I button down here, you then press the button corresponding to the dots. It comes up on the screen with name and number. So using the keys, I'm going to go name. Come down to my keypad, you've got an um, arrow here that if you hold down it will give you a capital letter. Once you've got the name programmed in, you can press OK. Moving to the other side of the screen, I'm now going to press the black button corresponding to number. If it's an outside number, you need to put your one in for your outside line. Um, if it's just an extension, you'll just put the extension number in, so you can override that one. Um, I'm going to put an outside number in, so I'm going to go one, followed by the phone number. And then press OK. You've now programmed that number, and when you want to get out of programming, you just press the hang up button, which will take you out. So you can see here now it's been programmed in. To ring that number, if I leave the handset in the cradle, I can then press the button corresponding to Leanne. It will go onto speakerphone. If you wish to lift the handset, you'll see it disappears, so you need to go back to your home page. So by pressing the clear button, it takes you back to your home page, and then you can press the button corresponding to that speed dial. Okay, I'm just going to hang up on that. If you need to reprogram that number by leaving the handset in the cradle, you must press the I button first. You can then press the key you wish to either modify or delete. I could go into name. I could clear it. OK. Then you can come across to number, clear it or modify it, and then OK. I've finished programming, I'm going to press my hang up button and you can now see that that speed dial has disappeared. To personalise your handset, you will need to scroll over to your menu page. So using your navigator key, arrow across, now you'd want to go into your settings. You could then press phone. Now from here, I can change my um, ringing tone. I could make the contrast of the screen darker or lighter. Um, I'm going to go into ringing. From here, I can change the melody. Moving down, I can turn my phone on to silent. Or I could um, have my phone beep first and then ring. Across the other side of the screen, you've got your volume. Now, remember when I took you through the key layout, I did explain to you that when the phone's actually ringing, you can use your minus or your plus to adjust the ringing tone. Um, if it's not ringing, you can come in here and you can go into your volume to do it. 
The next one down is progressive ringing, so it can start off softly and get louder until you've actually answered the telephone. I'm going to take you into Melody. Okay, and you've got a selection here that you can scroll through using your navigator key. Okay, there's quite a few there, so let's just go back up. Once you've got the one that you like, you can then press OK and that will lock in the ringtone. Now if I want to hang up from there and just totally exit programming, I can press my hang up key. Or if I press the C button here, it just takes me back through the menus. So now I might want to go into contrast. Okay, so I could adjust the screen contrast. It's, it's probably at the setting that you probably want to have it set at, but you could make it darker or you could make it lighter. When you're happy with that, press OK. Okay, and if I press the C key, you'll just see it's taking me back through the menus. And then I'm back to my personal page, which is my home page. As a first time user, you'll need to initialise your mailbox. That's why your envelope here is flashing. Now when I press that button, it's going to prompt me to record my name, which is your name only, it's not the greeting. Um, and you'll also be asked to enter in a four digit passcode. So I'll just demonstrate that to you. You're connected to your voice mailbox. You'll be asked to enter your personal settings. Please enter your password. Your password is 2580. To confirm, press hash. To cancel, press star. Please record your name now. Please speak after the tone and press hash when you've finished. Leanne Messon. To replay your recording, press 1. To re-record, press star. To confirm, press hash. Recording accepted. Please remember when you're actually recording your name and entering your passcode that you use a four digit passcode that is nothing common like 1234 or 4321. To personalise your mailbox by dialing star 88 it will take you into the mailbox menu. So this is where we're going to go to record a personal greeting. Mailbox personal message and then record. Hello, you've reached Leah Mason from Cogent. I'm sorry I've missed your call. If you wish to leave a message, please do so after the tone and I'll return your call as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay, so I've just pressed stop. From there I could listen to that greeting to make sure I was happy with it or if I was happy with it I can just press the OK button which will confirm. Now if you don't actually record a greeting, what will happen is it'll just play the, um, it'll play your name followed by a generic message. So it is quite nice to actually go in and record a personal message. Okay, I'll just hang up out of there. When you have a voicemail message, what happens is the screen will change. It's moved to our info page now. And I can see here that I've got two voicemail messages and my little envelope down here is flashing. So there's two ways of actually retrieving your voicemail messages. I'm going to show you both. Firstly, you can press the little envelope. Okay. Now, um, doing it this way, you're not prompted on what to do. So you just need to read the screen. So I want to go into voice. I need to enter in my passcode. And then I want to consult my voicemail box. I can see I've got two messages and just so that you can see I've got a little speakerphone on both of them so that's just letting me know that they're a new message. If I'd listened to one of these messages and didn't delete it, the speakerphone would move away from the side of the phone there. Okay, so I'm going to listen to the first message by pressing OK. It gives you the information on the screen, so if you've got caller ID, it'll actually show you the outside number. So I can see the time and the date that the message has come in and who's actually called me. I have some options here so I could play that message. I could send a copy to someone else so that can be quite handy if I want to send the message on to another colleague. I could delete it by pressing the clear button 
or I could call the um, voicemail person back. Okay, so I'm going to go play. Hello Leanne, missed you. Uh, could you please give me a call back? It's Robert. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to clear that message. And I've got the last one left. Okay. And I shall play it. Hi, Leanne. Just wanted to let you know that your dry cleaning has been selected. Bye. Okay, I'm just going to hang up on that. And I'd like to just take you back in just so that you can see what happens once you've um, listened to a message and if you haven't deleted it. So press the envelope, back into voice. Remember there's no prompts here. Okay, I'm going to consult my mailbox. And you can now say that it's um, no longer a new message, it doesn't have the speakerphone there. Hang up on that. If you'd like to have audible prompts when you're listening to your voicemail messages, you can dial 500, which I'll demonstrate very shortly. Once you dial 500, it asks you to enter in your mailbox number. Now your mailbox number is your extension number, followed by your passcode. So I'll just demonstrate that to you. 500. Please enter mailbox number. Please enter your password. You have one archived message. To listen to your message, press one. To send a message, press three. For personal options, press nine. Okay, so I'm just going to hang up on that now. Okay, so yeah, as I said, there's two ways to listen to your messages. Um, either you can follow the prompts on the screen or you can go to the audible um, voice prompts. I'm now going to take you through operator programming. This can only be done in the 8039 phone. So looking at the screen here, we want to use our navigator key to arrow over to the menu page. The bottom right hand corner, we have operator. Your passcode is 1 through to 8. And then press OK. Okay, there's a few things that we can do in here. We can change the time. We can go into subscriber. Now that's going to be used to rename phones that appear on the screen or reset people's passcodes if they forget their voicemail PIN number. We can go in and we can load our new speed dials. And the last thing that we can do, which I'll take you through at the end of the session, is we can go in and um, record auto attendant greetings. Okay, so firstly we're going to go into the clock. Now at this point you shouldn't need to change the date, but you'd scroll over by using your navigator key here, and then you could enter in the correct time. When you're happy with it, press OK and that will lock it in. Okay, so going into subscriber, I can now change the name, so press subscriber. Enter in the destination who I'm after, so I might enter in Robert. Comes up on the screen, press OK. Press name. Now from here I could clear Robert out. And I could put in the new person that's going to be assigned to that phone. And then OK. OK, so I've renamed that phone. If I wanted to go in and reset the passcode, I could go password reset. And then OK. And I've now reset that passcode. So what would happen now is that person would dial into their voicemail. It would prompt them to enter in a new PIN number. Okay, I'm just going to press the clear button, which will take you back through the screens. Back to my um, menu for operator programming. So we've been into clock, we've been into subscriber. If I wanted to put a speed dial in, I could go speed dial. New. I could put the name in, so I'm just going to put Cogent in here. Press OK. And now I'd enter in the telephone number. There's no need to put a 1 in for an outside line. And then press OK. 
All right, so I've now programmed in that number. So I used new, and as you can see, it's given me the um, speed dial number, which is 8025. So either you could distribute a list out to um, your colleagues, and they could just dial 8025, or they could use the keypad down the bottom to search for who they're looking for. Okay, I'm just gonna go back a screen. Okay, so we've done clock, subscriber, speed dial. Now expert is used to um, record your voicemail greetings. So each individual site would be configured differently. So you'll need to um, speak to your engineer about how it's been programmed. But for a standard auto attendant greeting, I would like to show you how to record that. So you can have a day message, you can have a night message. Um, so going into expert, I then arrow down and I have voicemail. Press voicemail. Auto attendant comes up on the screen. Okay, and it's my day message. And from there, it says here greeting on the screen, but what you need to do is you need to arrow over once, this is actually quite important, and it takes you to your main menu. Now that would be where you would record your, um, your day auto attendant greeting. Once you've gone record, it says are you ready to record, you'd press record. And as you can see we're now recording that greeting. When we're finished, we press stop. We can listen to it, and if we're happy with it we can press OK. And that will lock in the um, day auto attendant greeting. I'm just going to go back with my C button. So um, you've got your day greeting. You can also have a night auto attendant greeting. So that would be used for um, like the dial options. Press one for this person, press two for that. Generally, um, it wouldn't be programmed in the night auto attendant greeting. Only your day one would be used here. So I'm gonna arrow back once. Um, I'm now got my auto attendant greeting here. Um, but if I arrow down, I've got the general mailbox. So the general mailbox is normally where your night message would be recorded. So press general mailbox, and from there you could press record. Once you're ready, press record again. You're now recording the after hours night greeting. When you're finished, press stop. Again, you have the option to listen to it. If you're happy with it, press OK. So I'm just going to hang up on that. So just recapping with those greetings. So um, normally if you've got an auto attendant greeting, it would be auto attendant day greeting and you would record it in the main menu section. If you've got an after hours message, you have the option of either having it in auto attendant night, which isn't commonly used. Um, we normally use the general mailbox. That completes the training session for today. If you require any further information, please go to www.cogent.co.nz.